Um, if we take the weekend that we've just had, I've just actually outside listened to Keane O'Neill talking to reporters after the Kildare match, right. and his general sense was, I can't explain it. Things were going really well. We trained really hard. We had a brilliant camp last week. I felt we got the league stuff out of our system. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I, I'm, we're all in a state of shock, was his general uh, feeling. Tomas O'Shea obviously wrote about at the weekend. Did you see that piece? Yes. In, so, the, in the lead up to the match. In yeah. the lead up to the match. I'm sure Tomas is really saying, well, yeah. I took a risk saying that. At least there's a bit of indication yeah, now. And, not, and he said after, I, I told you so. Yeah. Well, he's, he did make one point. So you've obviously worked with Keane O'Neill. Yeah. Um, he said when he was training us in Kerry, it would crack me up sometimes. He'd be so long-winded with his exp- explanation of a drill. It might take him five, six minutes to explain something I often felt could have been clarified in 10 seconds. He said, fair enough. Some players probably appreciated the detail. Honestly, I couldn't bear it. And the general sense I got from Tomas, Tomas's piece was he was very uncertain over Keane O'Neill as an inter-county manager, whatever about, as a coach. Give us your experience, because it's obviously a tough piece. Absolutely, and I suppose Tomas is a traditionalist, old-style fo- football player. That's the way he played the game, that's the way he is. But to be, to be fair to Keane, Keane's background is sports science. Um, he, he works in that field. So I think all those type of people... Give the give these what long winded um, explanations. explanations. Yeah. I think that's that's the way their role is, their model. That's that's in their makeup. Um, Keen, like just from from my dealings with Keen, he, he's 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 excellent um, physical trainer. Mm-hmm. He can really get a team into incredible condition. Um, he would like to do a lot of the skills based based stuff himself. He takes a bit of pride in that. Um, so I don't know how, t- how, how things have got so bad in Kildare because I went to watch them in Leinster final last year and I said, these yeah, are... Pro- these on the d- up. Yeah. yeah. D- Dublin won by seven or eight points, maybe more in the end, but they were competitive for lar- large periods. And I, I went away thinking, OK, these, these guys are coming. Kevin Feely had arrived. And you weren't thinking, I'm unsure about Keenan Neal going from the drills and the sports science into the actual role of manager? Or were you, did you have question marks? I, I didn't really because I... like. Keen is a very confident type, yeah. um, so the, the, like, and he's a huge amount of experience built up. He's worked with the Tipperary hurlers, he's worked with the Mayo footballers, he's worked with the, uh, obviously with Kerry. Mm. So that's huge experience to have. Um, and going into his native Kildare, there was never going to be a question that he would put it put in the time and effort. Mm. But the lack of progression has been the biggest thing. And I to go nearly twelve months without a win, albeit in Division One, is very competitive. But that's where you want to be. Mm. If you want to be a Super A team, you need to perform in Division One, mm. uh, and they they haven't done that. They haven't done that. There seems to be lack of confidence, maybe a lack of direction where they're going. Um, do Keane and the management take the flak for that? They have to take a share of it. Mm. Um, the players aren't completely innocent here as well. They're the guys who put on the boots and go out. Um, and if I was a Kildare fan, I'd be really really disappointed and. I'd be really be wondering about where where we're going at all.